everyone. Welcome to another exciting edition of Words, Images, and Worlds. Many thanks to Greg Smith for jumping in and joining for this episode. Hi, Greg. How are you? Pretty good. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Glad to have you here. I know you're working comics primarily through the title Starlight. And let me make sure I get this right because uh, it's an uh, amazing title. I love this title. Uh, Junior Braves of the Apocalypse. Yes. Love it. Those love are, it. Very uh, creative are, title. Oh, thank you. <laughs> those are uh those are the um the the things that I'm known most for at the mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. And uh definitely we can talk about things coming up. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so uh that first question is an origins sort of question, and it is how did you know comics were the space for you and what do they allow you to do creatively? Um you know, that's a it, it's a it's a good question um i i honestly don't think i knew comics was the place for me mm -hmm. uh i i think as a uh as a kid or as, you know i mean like yeah as a kid i was always a, a storyteller um i was always a a creative person i guess my my folks always told me he's always got something to tell he's always he's always entertaining he's always um i i was an only child uh in a house full of uh, Smiths. <laughs> so, uh, and, you know, you got a, a family with the last name of Smith. You're, you're always surrounded by, by a lot of folks. <laughs> so you're always, um, it's always like a, uh, an event on a weekend or something like that. And everybody's got stories and you're always, oh, he's listening to stories, telling stories, learning how to tell stories and stuff like that from, from all the different generations and things. And, uh, as a kid, it's just one of those things that I, I was, just listening to my grandparents or my uncles and stuff like that and telling their stories and stuff like that on, on my dad's side of the family. And I was like, Oh, wow. You know, someday I'll, 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 I'll craft great things like that. I don't know. <laughs> like yeah. my, my grandfather always had like great stories and stuff like that. So I was like, Oh, that's always, you know, it's always neat to, um, you know, be able to pull stuff out and, and entertain people and hold court and stuff. And, uh, as I, as I got older, um, just like to, uh, just jot things down and stuff so like I think like my first time ever writing something down I wrote uh, I I really I really enjoyed the movie Critters mm -hmm. so I wrote a uh, a musical version of Critters Love with doo-wop songs because <laughs> I really was into doo-wop in fifth grade for some reason and uh, just catchy catchy tones you know so um but uh uh it was just one of those things where I, I just, I, I loved, I liked the, the idea of these little kind of like muppety things singing, but they're, you know, kind of, kind of mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I think like comics for me had always been something that I enjoyed reading, but I never really thought it was something that I could do um, because I thought that you had to do everything. Um, uh -huh. And uh, like when I was a kid, I loved to draw too, but I also had a hand injury. So, uh, I, I would so much, so many stories here. So, uh, as a kid, I, I was carving a pumpkin. I sliced my hand open. I cut through, um, uh, four out of five fingers. So I lost oh. the use of my hand for three years. Oh, I had wow. to type, I had to learn how to type in 1983 on a, <laughs> with one finger uh like basically yeah with one hand uh, with my left hand and right with my left hand which I was uh right-handed so um uh and having my hand bandaged up for and going through multiple surgeries for two to three years uh in the first through third grade you know the time when every kid learns how to write or do other things so mm -hmm. uh, learning how to write draw all that stuff kind of went out the window for me so my uh, I think like at the same time, my cousin and I both got these cool drafting tables and all these cool art books that my grandma thought that we were going to be these next artists, uh, you know? So uh, I just, I, I watched that kind of just like go to the side. And I, I, like I said, I like comic books. I got to read a lot of comic books when I was in the hospital, but I never really, uh, um, it wasn't something that I, I, I really like, oh, hey, that's something that I'm going to like aspire to fast forward 
later on in life um you know i hang out with a, a friend of mine uh later in in high school he's really into comics i'm really into comics we're still friends we, we do a podcast and stuff together um nice, nice. but we uh we you know we like to talk about stories and stuff and uh it's just like it's one of those like okay that's cool move off to go off to college and then meet this guy who ends up becoming my writing partner for from that point on and it's basically like oh hey want to come over and see my comic books and my action figures and from that point on it was just like oh cool but we it 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 really was like you know one of those moments of oh my dogs are I don't know if you could hear my dogs. They're just, hungry. Just slightly, but it's good. Yeah. It's good. Their it's hunger okay. is real. It's dinner time. My grandmother's feeding the dogs. Yes. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you, grandmother. Uh, yes, yes. Um, but uh yeah, no, so it was it was one of those things where like um uh I meet this guy, Mike Tanner. We we start talking about our 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 like for comics, you know, his his like and and whatnot, and like you know. Um, just like oh hey let's you know just like look at stuff or whatever and then fast forward we luck into you know making comics <laughs> yeah yeah and that's i again like i like i we like i joked with you earlier like uh i i'm listening to your to your shows and i'm like why do you want me on your show <laughs> I, yeah, you, I, you make I, the comics you make the I, comics you you sir i dub the comic maker no, no, I, I, I understand. But if you ask me, uh, like 12 year old kid, me, um, I, I was not, I was not the, uh, the, I, I, I wouldn't, I, I would not have an idea as to how any of this stuff works or, you know, like I would not see myself making comic books, writing comic books, doing any of this stuff. Um, because I, it doesn't, it, it would not compute <laughs> to me. As a kid who just was reading them, buying them off a spinner rack, and then hanging out with his buddy Dan and uh, and reading reading them, you know, in yeah. the library or whatever, when we're supposed to be doing classwork. <laughs> yeah. So, well, the the people that know the medium best are the the best makers sometimes. And you said a, a couple of things there that I that I really enjoyed. And one of those is uh, that story of a friend that's like, "Hey, c- do you want to come over? You want to look at." comics and toys yeah. because that is a great friendship right there yeah um yeah absolutely uh and 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 like uh and i know like one of the things too that like mike and i did bond over too is like our how we kind of fell into comics in that sense of like reading them was very similar we're both um uh like we have we 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 both like have dyslexia so we uh, as kids were given books like comics and stuff like that to help us with our reading and we grew up in an era where oh those kids they're you know it's going to be tough for them because you know they're they're just going to struggle through school <laughs> uh-huh, so uh-huh. and we're doing we're, I, I feel like we're the opposite of what probably most of our teachers thought we were going to end up doing because we're not <laughs> we're 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 a different situation i mean like i went from being in like special ed classes i went from it was oddly enough like when i when i we when i moved from the east coast i was in the like talented gifted burned out children's classes uh-huh. to when i moved out to the the west coast because it was supposed to be a big you know my dad got a better job. Life was supposed to be better. And I, I was dropped into special ed classes because, oh, he's got dyslexia. We don't know what to do with him. Oh, uh, wow. Huh. <laughs> so he can't read at the level that we're at. So just put him in this class. And then I was in Portable City. And just like, that's where, you know, <laughs> they send the uh, uh, the remedials. So. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's interesting though because at the same point like i spent a lot of time just like hanging out in the library and like okay well i'm i can't i i'm gonna end up in uh in a different place doing different stuff than all the other kids because they don't want me in the regular classes because i take too long to do whatever so um i'll just go and figure it out on my own (laughs) so Yeah. I don't know. 
the eighties, like late eighties, early nineties was a very different place. <laughs> very, <laughs> very much so. Yeah. Very different place. I uh I mentor a couple kids that are that are very fortunate now. Uh-huh. Uh they have a lot of great resources and stuff like that. So uh, I'm like blown away how how different their experiences are. So yeah. Yeah. I remember what those classes looked like and I remember getting pulled out for reading instruction and, and all of those things too. It's, it's a different landscape. It's still work to do and improvements to make, but different landscape for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And it, and it's, it's, uh, you know, that I think it's, um, like, I'm not going to be like, Oh, I built all this great character and stuff like that. Cause you know, uh, did, it sucked <laughs> but yeah. at the same yeah. point at the same point um it it definitely helped it helped me be able to open up and tell some of these other stories if you've like if you read junior braves you see there's a group of kids that are going through different stuff uh-huh. and you're able to meet those kids and they go and and have those experiences uh same with like in starlight and stuff like that so i'm able to take from those those bad experiences uh, and put that into other things so yeah. i mean it's not it, it you got to take the good things and the bad things and you know not to get all facts of life on you but... <laughs> i was gonna say <laughs> put them together what do you have yeah, yeah. comics yeah exactly you know yeah. i mean we build off of those experiences mm-hmm. you know it's like it's for every bad thing that happens you gotta take a look. You gotta gotta make a good thing out of it. At least something. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Not every bad meal is bad. That's Pizza. Right. It's always good, right? Barbecue. It's always good. Doesn't matter what you put on it. You could put barbecue on the pizza. It works. Oh my god! Barbecue pizza is delicious. It is. It is. Tandoori pizza. Have you had tandoori better. pizza? Oh mm-hmm. my gosh! Blew my mind. So good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, I was going to ask about your creative process and kind of how you go through oh. that and uh, explore ideas. So that kind of taps into that a little bit. I've been thinking about this. If I could bottle the process and sell it, I would be a millionaire because mm-hmm. I don't even understand how it works. My wife is like, you're the only person that I know that could go in for a shower and come out with 10 different ideas that you don't even know what you're going to do with them. Because I will like all of a sudden I'm sitting there and I'm brushing my teeth and like, bam, idea. I gotta, I gotta write this down. This is so good. Or I'll like wake up in the middle of the night and I'm like, ah, ah, pen, I need to write this down. And and then I wake up with like the, like wake up fully the next morning. And I'm like, what what does this mean? There's three (laughs) words written down and they don't make any sense. And cat. (laughs) future i what does that mean laser cats that's what that is well i mean we're pretty close (laughs) we're pretty close to starlight i mean there are cat aliens they have laser guns they are kind of futuristic i mean that's so not too far off uh that was not me though that was all travis webb (laughs) (laughs) we do share the same brain some days some days yes but (laughs) um uh the uh but there are those moments where it's like i could be doing something just very mundane ideas pop up and then i'm just like okay i gotta write it down uh mm-hmm. and i have to i i had to just sit down and and do this i had to i'll, I'll pull out my, my phone a uh, piece of paper uh fast food bag tear it in half and just start writing uh you know uh I used to carry a surface around with me all the time and in my bag and just pull it out and just start typing into it. And, and I'd be writing in that thing all the time until like, in, until it died, <laughs> until it yeah. stopped updating, you know? So, uh, but it's a, uh, it's a thing. Like if it's, if it's good, if the, if the clay is good mm-hmm. and we can kind of, uh, kind of make it, make it formed up into something workable then uh work with it but uh then you know with any with anything if it's not then you'd have to change it around a bit and and see what what doesn't work and get rid of those things that don't uh on on my on, like with I'll, I'll say with junior braves or or starlight or even my most recent project that mike tanner and i are working on um that 
<laughs> there's been moments where we have literally thrown everything out the window uh-huh. and, and just said, nah, 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 can't, it, it doesn't work. Start over uh, new book. <laughs> <laughs> like literally like and 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 that's happened that's because you just have to i mean like um the idea is is good but the, everything that you have is it just doesn't it's just not doing it so it's like well let's just let's just start over <laughs> yeah yeah back to the drawing board yeah and you know sometimes it's it's frustrating but uh i think that in that sense you do come out better because if it's um if it's not if it's not a solid thing then it's not gonna work for people reading it um and it's not gonna be enjoyable yeah and sometimes when editors come back and then they're like oh hey what if you did this and then this and this is the i mean this will be the frustrating thing is when somebody will come back from editorial on a project and and kick back like a bunch of different things and then they're like and then what if you did this and it was exactly what you just thrown away (laughs) on like the the second or third draft that you didn't turn in and you're like what if i had uh, done that (laughs) hold on a second hold on um let me let me pull this back out of final draft and Uh see if it's still in there (laughs) and and yeah it'll it's in there (laughs) So, yeah. but, uh, and there's been one or two times where, uh, Mike and I have, I've pulled something out or, or Travis and I've done something like that. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, there's, there's a moment of, 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 uh, oh, eject. <laughs> <laughs> now I, I was going to ask about those positive collaborations. So, oh. um, you've already mentioned a few names and it's just yeah. part of that a natural part of talking about the process right yeah yeah um so uh positive collaborations um so on the writing side of things i've worked with michael tanner uh since college so 1998 he and i met in a writing class and pretty much never looked back (laughs) like Mm -hmm. uh we we started writing and um i think like inked our first professional work in 2004 so like uh, you know, we've written a lot of different things. And then in 2004, we, we did something that actually was meritable in a sense. It was, so we, uh, we'd worked on screenplays and, and wrote them out for like, you know, uh, uh, did more like movie and TV type stuff and, and, and all, but, uh, so we've been, we've been doing that for like 20 years almost. We're like into our 19th year, boy, what do you get somebody for their 20th anniversary? I, I've been, <laughs> I've been, I, I I joked with him when he when he got married to his his wife. I was like, you know, you better treat him you better treat him right. He was mine first. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, uh, with Travis, uh, it's it's the irony is I've known Travis for uh a long a long time, not as long as Mike, but I, we've been around each other circular wise, mm-hmm. um, uh, just in the same circles of people although we've never we never like hung out before um uh seven seven or eight years ago um when we started working together or well started hanging out i guess like i think it was like 20 2014 ish we met 2015 and then like we um it was one of those like, oh, hey, we should go eat and like talk and whatever, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, and then um, writing and stuff was one of those those things where he uh, um, he just was like, hey, I know that you you've you've done some. He was a uh, a, a ghostwriter on some projects. I've I, I ghostwritten some things before. We talked about some things like, yo, hey, how does that feel? How does that feel? And we're like. Hey, we should we should write something together sometime. And then he was like, I got some ideas. Do you want to work on this thing together? And and uh it was it just kind of like clicked where he called up on uh about this thing that he and Brett Woodell were working on, uh which became Starlight, and they were mm-hmm. driving back from Burning Man, and he was like, We got this idea, we want to tell you about it, but we're driving back from Burning Man and it is crazy. I will meet you for coffee downtown Seattle. 
in three days be there <laughs> and i was like okay and he got there and he had a script he'd nice. been working on so um uh but and and it was it was great like i read it and i was like this is really cool what do you want for me like just i can give you input or whatever you know I, I was like i whatever you want i'm i'm here to do and he's like i don't know what i want to do with it yet and you know a couple of months later a couple of months goes by and then i he's like i i i want you to work on this with me because i'm stuck so and i was like okay i guess <laughs> so and and now we're like in our seventh issue of the book so awesome it's been, yeah <laughs> so um but uh yeah, it's it, it's always great to uh, you know working with other writers in in that sense. But then also too, there's other art you know there's artists and stuff like that to have their input. So like with Junior Braves, uh, Zach Lehner, he's been tremendous. Like um, uh, it's one of those things where he and I became fast friends. We both had a, a Boy Scout experience. Uh, he was a Boy Scout, I was a Boy Scout, both Eagle Scouts, and he had a lot of um, uh, discussion about how Braves could and should be in some ways uh -huh. uh, based on his experience and my experience and we were just you know like banter back and forth uh via text and email and stuff like that and just phone calls and and whatnot and it was one of those things where you know we just bonded over that and uh his his input about how you know like the create you know we talk about creative process uh hey guys i think that you might want to rethink how certain things play out for this because it might not be either humanly possible or humanly possible to draw and mm -hmm. I'll, <laughs> so you know in, in some ways you know just a little pushback and stuff like that uh but it was good it was like you know not a negative thing it was like a just a um let's pump the brakes let's think about this let's, let's work this you know work through the scenario so that we can understand how this could work out and and might look better and let me give you some different ideas and and it was like the the collaboration in that aspect was like oh wow okay cool you're an active part of this you're not just you know the draw otter that's like here pencil hand draw thing you know uh -huh, uh -huh. my brain is working you draw the thing and that's never the kind of relationship that i want to have with somebody i don't ever want them to just like draw a thing i i want them to push back if they don't think it's right you know they they're like i don't this this doesn't work <laughs> i want yeah. it to be a very active relationship to make the pages work to make the art work to make the book work because when it comes down to it our names are all in the book uh -huh. and uh -huh. if it if it doesn't if it's not a, a collaborative work then you know it doesn't work at the table either you know so yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so what is currently on the the creative horizon? What are you looking at right now and uh, and where can listeners find out more? Okay, so currently right now, um uh Travis and I are finishing up our uh issue 6 of Starlight with Brett Waddell and uh and the amazing Tom Warsawski uh littering and we're just going through and, and I will tell you okay if you if you told 12 year old me uh 15 year old me 16 year old me 16 16 year old me walking into the spider's web uh with cuz like I grew up in in Puyallup Washington uh went to high school in Puyallup Washington and spider's web uh, for anybody that knows Todd McFarlane, uh, uh -huh. him and his brother-in-law owned that store. And on any given day, you're just walking to the store. You would expect him to be there. But uh, and then to see Todd there, you're like, oh, hi. Uh, <laughs> happened on a couple of occasions as a as a as a young person and yeah. being like, um, uh, hi. And he's like, what are you reading? Uh, your books. <laughs> 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 um, hi. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, to, to have Tom who lettered some of his books, uh -huh. um, spawn yeah. side, uh, definitely cool. Um, it makes my whole high school experience kind of full circle. So, yeah. and to have him weigh in and say, um, Hey, and, and, and to, to have him tell me how my writing, uh, with Travis is and to be like, you know, talk about collaboration here, having like somebody who, 
a hundred percent has been around the block on, on books uh-huh. tell you what you can do better <laughs> is like, yeah. Okay. Tell me more, please. Yeah. I want to learn. Thank you. <laughs> I'm yeah. just going to sit here and listen. <laughs> I read this email over again. Okay. Let me do that again. <laughs> Cause I, I am always open to, to getting that feedback and, or when we do something good and it's like, well, thank you. <laughs> uh, that was that, that, and hearing that we had a good issue, uh, you know, that issue five was, that was one that he really enjoyed lettering, yeah. um, made yeah. me feel like we did, we wrote something good. <laughs> High so, praise. High yeah. Praise. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, no, just that, that, yeah. If just knowing that he's going to be with us through, uh, six and seven, uh, finishing up, uh, number six, uh, we just passed some, uh, red lines last night and then getting that back and then doing our, uh, number seven script and getting that out. So for, for art on that. So it's, uh, wrapping up number, uh, number seven on starlight. And then, uh, Michael Tanner and I are launching, we're getting ready to launch people uh, wearing my NASA gear because uh, the absolute zeros are, are getting ready to lift off with camp launch pad uh, here in March. So uh, we got a book coming out with little Brown and Einhorn Epic productions. And we got Gabrielle Gomez doing the amazing art that she does. And Mm -hmm. it has been a, amazing ride with the the campers from camp launch pad uh it's it's a it's a fun book and book series i can say Mm -hmm. (laughs) so uh i am i'm excited about it it's something that uh uh you want to like i guess inside baseball in the writing process here here you go and Uh and 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 this for anybody that's out there that's that's wanting to know uh if you're going to a pitch meeting uh, have have a couple things in your pocket because you're gonna you're gonna go in for a pitch and if you got one thing that one thing definitely probably is not going to be it right and if you have two things that second thing is probably not going to be it and if you have three things that third thing that might be it but i'll tell you what if you have something else <sighs> because we're at breakfast and we already hit the third thing and Uh it was a thanks a lot so glad we met for breakfast but uh everything that you talked about wasn't really what we're looking for um you guys have a great weekend um and uh we'll 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 reach out if there's any, anything that we, we want to talk about in the future. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, okay. And then all of a sudden there's a, there's a thing in the back of my head that just doesn't know when to stop talking. Uh, and I, I, I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, this was the thing that um, I think when I was a kid, I, I would watch my family members always just, it would like, at like I said before, at the, at the family gatherings and stuff like that, they would just like, it would just, it would start to go. And then I'd listen to them do their stories and stuff. And, and all of a sudden that thing just like turned on. And I was like, you know what? You still got a couple blueberries on your plate. Why don't you finish those up as I tell you this? Uh-huh. And I start talking about what becomes absolute zeros as it starts falling out of my face. Nice. And it's just like falling out. I'm, I'm giving this pitch about these kids at the summer camp. And I'm like, imagine your favorite space camp, but it's terrible. It's horrible. It's just like uh, the worst rundown camp ever. But all the kids there, they just don't care except for one kid, but that's okay. You know? And, and they're asking Mike, like, do you have anything to say? And he's like, I, I, this is all coming out of Greg's head right now. I don't, I don't know where he's going. <laughs> and they're like, well, we'll, um, we'll write it up. <laughs> nice. nice. I, that is a it, gift. That is a gift. I, I, it, it, it was one of those things though, that we like, we had kind of talked about it mm-hmm. before, but we hadn't really fleshed anything out. And it was just, it was just kind of all spitball, you know, like, so like we had joked, like, what if there was a 
a, a meatballs type camp with a space camp type camp where you had space camp and meatballs and you put it together and it was like no kids would understand what what meatballs is today and you know like where there's this kind of situation and and and, and space camp is like i mean like who goes to space camp anymore uh, you, you know what i mean like i mean uh-huh, you could uh-huh. you could you could watch it on nova or, you know or you could do it with a virtual headset i mean or most most schools have like really cool stem classes and stuff like that so it's not that it it you know it just it seems like that's that's a thing right but i mean who am i i'm just a just an old man now <laughs> <laughs> an old man writing stories and uh not that old not that old i think we're probably about the same age because i was also in school in the late 80s and the 90s yeah so. yeah. <laughs> yeah but i i'm just sitting there thinking to myself like okay okay well yeah, kids, kids, kids want to go to space camp. <laughs> yeah. So oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, I still I want to go to space camp. I still want to go to space camp. And and the irony was like when we were when we had pitched this and we and we got the green light to go ahead and write this, we had looked into going to space camp to go to space camp. And mm-hmm. then COVID or like, you know, like 2020 hits and it was like, hey, let's go to space camp this summer, January of January, like january 10th of 2020 and then you know we're like oh hey we can't do that so (laughs) but need i need i digress well well, greg looking forward to the work that is on the way is there a a web space social media presence you want to mention before Um, we go yeah so you can find me at that amazing twit on instagram uh uh i guess x twitter uh twitch um or gk wordsmith on facebook or um trying to think um threads maybe i don't i don't know i don't know there's a lot of (laughs) you can find me at either one of those things or like uh is it uh as i should have researched that boy boy i didn't know there's gonna be homework (laughs) <laughs> oh yeah it's a, it's an involved process um, it's an involved me, process that's right uh let no, me look I, you up on the thread yeah no there's i i think it's uh i think it's i think it's that amazing twit on threads and i think it's gk wordsmith on on uh tiktok cool cool you you're <laughs> you are well represented um yeah well they tell you they tell you now it's not it's not how if you can write a book that's going to engage the kids it's if you can make a video that's going to engage the kids for 30 seconds there it is. There it is. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, glad to share about your work. I'm glad that you're out in the world creating and uh, glad to talk anytime about the projects that are on the way. Thank you. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. My pleasure. Anytime.